There we go. Evening, guys. How are you? Hello, hello, guys. Thank you for coming. I'm happy to see you again. Hope you guys are doing fine. Like always, hope you guys had a great day today. Really happy to see you. Today is going to be the last class of the week. So I'm happy. We are almost done, guys. Just this class and we are going to be done for the week. So that's awesome, right? So thank you for coming again. Welcome, Dinora. Hi, Lauren. teacher. Hi. How are you doing today? Let me see. Just wanna do something. Yes, very well. Very good. Really happy yes. to see Dinora. Oh. What can you all, tell me? All working. <laughs> What do you say? Uh, what was that again? Always working. Oh, I see. Yes. Yep. I know. I have this. I know that feeling because that's the same for me. I have to go to work always, all every day. So. Yeah. But the good thing, Dinora, is that it's almost Friday, so we are almost there. Okay, we are almost finished. We just have to probably go to work just one or two days. And that's it. And then you have the weekend. So you can relax. So you can just stay in bed, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but in my case, I uh, will work, work um, Saturday. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. You will work on Only Saturday? Only um, half day. OK. Yes. And why is that, Dinora? Do you do you usually work on on that day, or just this week? Uh, sorry, I don't understand. Uh, do you usually work on Sunday? You said you're gonna work on Sunday. Ah, uh, um, no, I don't work Sunday. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. It's my free day. Oh, that's your day off. Ah, yes, <laughs> day off. Your day off, I see. Very <laughs> good. Yes. Very good. Well, thank you, Dinora. I appreciate that. Welcome, Jacqueline. Thank you for coming. I'm happy to see you again. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> awesome. Again. Very good. <laughs> Very good. I see you. Uh, I see you're doing good today. You look fine. You look awesome today. Yes. I finished early today and I'm relaxed. <laughs> awesome. That's an, that's an amazing feeling when you can get up from work early. That feels really good. I know. Yeah. I know. Yes. I wish I could uh, get up from work earlier because now I'm, I finish work at six. So mm -hmm. I don't like it. Uh, I wish I could just get up from work earlier than that because I feel like I don't have time to do anything I mean I just I feel like I just go to work then I have like two hours uh, to do uh, things and then I have to be here uh, at, at the with the, in, in the class so I sometimes feel like I don't have too much time and I'm and I'm tired I don't know I don't I don't usually uh, uh lately yes. I feel tired this hour because it's, I, I I think that from eight to nine is the time is is, is the time that uh, we are just, uh, relaxing. We're just relaxing and just waiting for waiting to to go to sleep. To go to bed, right? Uh huh. That's true. But anyway, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, Jacqueline, thank you. Bueno, vamos a ver. Tenemos a Luis por acá, Arlene, Marroquín. How are you? I'm pretty good, thank you. Also, very good. 
Yes. Happy to see you, Arlene. What can you tell us about your day? About my day. Oh, my day was, today was really busy. I have a lot of things to do in my work. And um, principle, I have taken care of my mom the last two weeks, so I couldn't uh, barely, I barely uh, couldn't work. So mm. right, that's why sometimes I, I didn't connect to the class or I didn't uh, complete the task for the mm -hmm. uh, for the online website that we mm -hmm. have to the, the, the task that we have to complete. But uh, now uh, she's better now and so I'm taking time to complete all my pending tasks. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I'm sorry to hear that, Arlene, and I'm I'm happy to hear that your mother is doing better now, because yeah, uh, yeah. thank you. Yeah, thank yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I know that that can be something really concerning. We can be like, uh, that we are thinking about that all the time. It, it, we know that there is something wrong, so when yeah. things get better. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and we have to go to the hospital. Uh, we have to take care about her medicines and everything. So it was really tired. Mm -hmm. um, but Really tiring. Tiring. But, uh, tiring. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I can imagine, Arlene. I haven't been in that situation before, but I know some people who have been in that kind of situations uh, that they have to take care of their mothers and it is really time consuming because you have to yeah. uh, go to different places like you said you go to the hospital then you may go to a clinic and then you may have to go somewhere else to get some lab work done and then uh, get other tests uh, testing done somewhere else and then uh, yeah. just like you said the medication and it's really expensive too yeah it, it, it was too ex it was expensive too yes i know yeah i can imagine well yeah. but hopefully she will be better and yeah. that hopefully yes very soon yes thank you she's she's better now very good i'm happy to hear that Elena. thank you you're welcome so yeah i mean that is really concerning sometimes guys uh when you have a relative especially if it's your mother or your father, or even brothers or sisters or children, that can be really concerning. And I'm happy, at, uh, let's say that I'm really grateful because in my family, we don't really get uh, sick that much, let's say. It's like we sometimes can have like a headache or a fever, or we may have uh, but nothing cold, serious, right? Nothing serious, right? That's yeah. yeah. So I think that that is something that we should be really grateful. When I was younger, I didn't realize how important uh, it is to be healthy. But now I I, I realize that that is something uh, wonderful. I mean, it's like one of the most important things in life to be healthy and uh, for your family, everybody in your family to be healthy. That's like a gift. Yes, you're right. So, well, guys. Bueno, muchas gracias, Arlene. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And we are happy, of course, to hear that your mother is feeling better now. Eh, vamos a ver. What about eh, Karen? We have Karen here. Welcome, Karen. Thank you for coming. Hello, everyone. How are you doing, Karen? I'm doing great, as always, a lot of work, but, um, well, happily, we have welcomed a new uh, member in our team because we had two uh, members left, so oh. we have one um, today mm -hmm. that is in, uh, in our team, join, and um, hopefully the things is going to be better. And now we are going to have less work. That's good. Very good. Yes. That sounds that sounds great. Hopefully that yeah. that can happen, Karen, and you can uh have less work to do because I mean when we have less people working in our team, then we have more things to do, right? So hopefully you you can have 
uh, more colleagues that work with you. Yeah, so, it's gonna be two, but for now it's one. And I think in uh, December, the first week, we will have the other um, team member. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, it takes time because Thanks. they have to learn. What we do is a learning process, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, probably next year is going to be probably better. Next year. Yeah. Very good. I like it, Karen, and I'm happy to hear that you are doing great. I, I like it because, I mean, I don't know why, but Karen always makes me uh, feel like she is really relaxed, like there is nothing to worry about. So I like that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> well, probably it's just the impression, but uh, yeah, when I'm in meetings, I'm, <laughs> yes, I'm really, really nervous with, with my bosses. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but well, thank you. you. <laughs> Well, thank you, Karen. Thank you. Vamos a ver. Tenemos a Rodrigo también. Hello, Rodrigo. How are you? How are you doing today, Rodrigo? Oh, it's because we know you're the one. Uh, I'm fine. Um, being with some, uh... You're fine. Okay, very good, Rodrigo. I don't know why, Rodrigo, but we can uh, we can hear you very well. It's like the sound is like muffled. So I don't know. Uh, maybe you are using your wireless uh, headsets again. That could be the reason why. Uh, yes, uh, I, I don't change the, the headphones. I, I, uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I have the same problem. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, um, you can help me very well? Mm -hmm. Not really, not really. It's, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's difficult to understand what you're saying. Okay, yes. no, I, I, don't, uh, I don't think my paper. Mm -hmm. I probably the next week, I think the uh, husband. Yeah, probably that would, that would be a good idea, maybe to get some new uh, headphones or something because it doesn't sound uh, it's really hard to understand what you're saying but that that could be it like it could be the microphone I, I got a new uh, I got a new set of headsets actually because the ones that I had I think that sometimes people couldn't hear me very well but these ones are very good I like them yeah you sound better right right thank yeah. you Karen yeah. I know yeah, the other ones, I think that they probably were getting old, like they were probably too old, uh, so they were worn out, I think. Maybe they are broken or something, I don't know. But I think that my voice sounded really low for some reason, right? So, okay. But I think, yeah, uh, my dad's uh, play is very, um, well, uh, 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 o lejos. O como lejos. Like he's far, far away. Mm -hmm. That sounds like that. The mountain. The mountain. For the mountain. Algo así. So yeah, that's okay. That's okay, Rodrigo. No worries. Hopefully, you can get some new headsets maybe and that then we can hear you a little bit better because right now, um, it is difficult. Uh, it's really hard to, to, to hear you. So that's okay. Don't worry. Well, thank you so much, Rodrigo. I appreciate that. Okay, then we have Luis. We have Evelyn, who just joined the class. How are you doing today, Evelyn? How is your day going? Are you able to talk okay. now? Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, my day was interesting. <laughs> oh, because, really? 
Yeah, well, for me, for me, okay. because uh, in the morning I I was sleeping all morning. That sounds, <laughs> I don't know why. And great. then uh, I I start to I I start to to watch the uh, movie Sex Education, and oh. I don't know why, but I like it. And like then it. I and then I I I wear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I okay. went to the shore, and finally I am, I am here. But for me, it's interesting because it's very difficult uh, to stay in my home and uh, sleep all all day, specific because <laughs> I I I should say why well, should do the different thing. And today was okay. It's nice, and <laughs> only enjoy the moment. That sounds very good. Very good. Yeah. So you had time. Uh, to stay late in bed, uh, you started to watch this movie and you liked it, right? Sex Education, that's the name of the movie. Yes. Awesome. Okay, very good. Yeah. yeah I think that when we have the opportunity to just relax, uh, sleep a little bit more than usual, that feels amazing. I, I, know, I know that uh, almost every day I just wake up and, I, and I'm like, I wish I could stay in bed longer because I don't want to get out of bed. It feels so good in the morning, guys. I don't know why. It's like what they say what when you... What time... Uh -huh. And at what time did you get up? That's the funny thing. I, I don't really get up so early in the morning. I get up around 6 maybe or 7. So oh. not, not too early. Mm-hmm. But Today I, really... I get up at eleven o'clock. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> eleven a.m. Okay, <laughs> great. So you got up at eleven a.m. All right. <laughs> very good. Yeah, very good. Probably you got hungry, and then that's the reason why you got out of bed. Yes, and my <laughs> mom did a soup, and I enjoyed my lunch with oh. my with my movie. With my cereal. I see. So she cooked uh, lunch for you. She made you uh, a soup, right? She yes. made you. Okay, very good. Very good. <laughs> that sounds great. All right. So basically, uh, you had a great day, Evelyn. You didn't do anything today. Not even, <laughs> exactly. not even food. <laughs> Ni siquiera cocinó hoy, Evelyn. Qué, qué genial, ¿verdad? Hasta la mamá le hizo la comida. Qué nice. <ríe> qué genial. Bueno, recordemos, por lo general, guys, cuando hablamos acerca de hacer, digamos, la comida, por lo general decimos make, ¿verdad? Make. So I make a sandwich. I make a... a no sé, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, it depends. I make uh, scrambled eggs. Or things like that, right? You can say I, I cooked, like the cocinar, I cooked. Um, something like that. I don't know. Uh, you, you know what I mean, right? Básicamente para cocinar, utilizamos esos verbos como make, cook, and that kind of things. Uh, porque do, she did me, uh, she do, for, por ejemplo, si queremos decir que ella me hizo una sopa, she did me a soup. Uh, did, por lo general, no se utiliza para ese tipo de cosas. Utilizamos make más que todo cuando estamos hablando de algo que preparamos con nuestras manos. ¿Ok? So, she make me a sandwich, she make me a soup, that kind of things. Uh, all right? I'm just saying uh, so we can improve that kind, of, that kind of things. ¿Ok? Ok, Karen, uh, you, want, you want to say something? And no, it was about to say the same that, well, as I understand, uh, the verb make is for something that we do or use our hands mm -hmm. and the verb do is something like he do me a favor he's something mm -hmm. like we are not using our hands mm -hmm. but it's my understanding yep very good yes that's basically mm -hmm. that's basically it so you're right very good karen so i'm just saying this and i just do it guys because i want you to uh sorry guys Okay, never mind. Yeah, I'm just saying these kind of things is not, uh, I mean, I, I like to talk to you so we can uh, basically identify that uh, little uh, things that we need to improve, right? It's just, you guys are awesome. You guys 
are doing a great job, but sometimes probably when we start talking, then there may be uh, one or two words that we have some difficulties with. Uh, like for example, when we wanna talk in the past, sometimes that can be a little challenging for us. Uh, sometimes we say the wrong uh, tenses, right? Like for example, I, I get out of, sometimes we say I get up from bed at eight when we need to say something like I got up, uh, I'm sorry, I got up from bed at 11 a.m. For example, I got up from bed because that is in the past, right? So we just need to get accustomed to that kind of things. I know it's hard, but we can do it, okay? We can do it. We all make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes, okay? So don't worry about that. That's fine. All right, guys. So I really thank you for uh, sharing everything with me. I, I appreciate that. I really love talking to you guys. Uh, I really liked it and I appreciate I appreciate it very much. So uh, yesterday, guys, we were working on, uh, as you can remember, we talked about the simple past and also the past continues when we wanted to talk about uh, two actions, one action that was in progress in the past, and then another action that interrupts uh, the action that was uh, going on in the past, right? So let me just uh, present you the structure over here really quick. Bueno, nos quedamos en esta parte. Eh, ya vimos lo del pasado progresivo, el pasado simple. Entonces ahora nosotros nos quedamos en la parte de el pasado perfecto. Ok, so eh, más o menos les expliqué de qué se trataba el pasado perfecto. Está por acá. Vamos a ver si lo voy a poner por aquí. Vamos a ver. All right, so who can help me to read uh, this paragraph? I need somebody to help me with this. I can help you. Thank you, Arlene. Go ahead. The past perfect tense is a verb form used to refer to a past action that occurred mm -hmm. before another past action. All right, very good. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Arlene. So basically, uh, we have like this definition that tells us that when we use the past perfect tense, we use that so we can refer to something that happened before uh, another action that happened in the past. Okay, Both of them uh, took place in the past, but we use the past perfect so we can talk about uh, the action that happened uh, before uh, the second action, right? Like uh, we are going to see some examples for that. And we have something more here that says the past perfect is formed using had. Okay, so we are using the past of have, right? So we have the word had along with the past participle of the main verb. Okay, like in this case, known, or we can say uh, things like uh, been, I had, she had been. Uh, she had known, uh, she had, uh, for example, brought, uh, she had made, and that kind of things, right? So basically, the verb has to be in the past participle form, okay? And we are always going to use the uh, word had for every one of the subjects that we have like in this case we have i had you had he she it had we had uh, you had and they had okay that's for the affirmative we just have the the pronoun in this case or the subject then we have had and then we have the verb which is in the past participle form that's very important so i had eaten and then uh, we can add some kind of complement right so Vamos a ver por acá. Tenemos un pequeño video nosotros acerca de esto. Let me present you the video really quick, guys. It's going to take me just a second. So please bear with me. See? This one. Okay, here we go. Okay, I just want to make sure that we have the sound. Okay. So we're going to listen to this video. This is like a little explanation about the past perfect. And we also have uh, some other past events, like in this case, we have uh, 
progressive action in the past. We have a simple past here. And then we, again, we have the simple past uh, one more time. But in this case, it's for the verb to be. So we're going to listen to the video and then we can uh, talk about it, okay? So here we go. Hi everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to express an event that occurred before another event in the past. For example, I went to a party last weekend, but when I got there, my friends had eaten all the food. I'll explain the structure in a little bit, but the most important thing to remember about this topic is how and when to use it. Therefore, I would like to spend a few minutes giving lots of examples. So if um, we write the example that I, I gave to you in uh, just a couple of seconds ago, um, I, let me write that down. I went to a party last weekend, but uh, when I got there, my friends had eaten all the food. Okay, so if we think about that example there, what I'm doing is I'm talking about two events that occur in the past. And it's important for me to relate the two because that will uh, emphasize my idea. It will outline what I'm trying to express. I went to a party last week. This is what took place last weekend. So that is that X, if you will. All right. But when I got there, my friends had eaten all the food. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and highlight that in a different color. Um, my friends had eaten all the food. This is the event in the circle that you see there. This happened before I got to the party. So whenever I say I went to a party last weekend and I ate all the food, what that means is that I went to the party and when I got there, there was food at the party. And then my friends ate it. But that's not really what I want to express. What I really want to explain is that I went to the party and there was no more food left because something had happened before that. And that was the fact that my friends ate the food. So that's why this is really important. You need to know when to use this particular topic. So I'm going to continue to give you more examples. Now let's look at the examples on the chart. As you can see, the examples on the chart um, refer to uh, basically it's a it's a person that uh, was at the gym and uh, he forgot to lock his locker and therefore this is what took place right? as we'll analyze the examples that are there I was working out and I have put my stuff in my locker all right wait let, let's stop there for a second I was working out is the past event that's that X if you will what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to relate the second event to that past event and I have put my stuff in my locker so th that I have put my stuff in my locker is the past perfect event that happened before this past event so it's that little blue circle that you see there when I came back that's that event there that's the uh, past event okay someone had stolen my wallet so um, I came back but before this event someone had stolen my wallet all right they were able to steal it that's the past event so that's that x if you will because i had forgotten to lock the locker all right now that is the past perfect event as you can see there let me just give one last example here all right guys so i'm gonna take just uh, some time to talk about this a little bit so uh, we have the timeline again we have the past the present and the future right so again, we have two events that occurred in the past and they both finished basically, right? So we have event number one, then we have event number two. Okay, so we use the past perfect to talk about uh, something that happened before, uh, before another past action, like in this case, right? For example, it says here, uh, example number one, I was working out and I had put my stuff in my locker, okay? So I was doing something here, and before that, I did something else. Like in this case, I had put my stuff in my locker. How do we translate this to Spanish? So basically, it's like, yo estaba eh, haciendo ejercicio, o estaba ejercitándome, 
eh, y había puesto, había, ok, así lo vamos a traducir siempre, había puesto mis cosas en mi eh, casillero, digamos, ok, el casillero. So, that's basically the idea. Then we have, when I came back, ok, I came back, someone had stolen my wallet, ok. This would be this, that second action, ok. I came back, but before I came back, something else happened. And in this case, is that someone had stolen my wallet. ¿Ok? Cuando yo regresé, alguien había robado mi billetera. ¿Ok? Then, then uh, we have example number three. It says, uh, they were able to steal it because I had forgotten to lock my locker. So, uh, they were able to steal it Uh, because, okay, they, they stole my wallet because I had forgotten to lock the, the locker in this case. So basically, that's the idea. Okay. Do we have any questions, guys, about this? Any questions so far? All right, no questions so far. All right, so we have some examples, uh, some more examples here. Like I went to a party last weekend, but when I got there, my friends had eaten all the food. Okay, so I did something in this case, I went to the party, but before that, before I came, uh, before I, I did this action number one, something else happened before that, right? They had eaten all the food. Okay, yo fui a la fiesta, en pasado, pero antes de que yo llegara a la fiesta, mis amigos ya se habían comido la, la comida, ok, so basically that's how it works, vamos a ver, vamos a adelantar un poquito, so what I want to explain is that I didn't have any money, but I want to give a reason on why I didn't have any money, so I'm talking about two events from the past, One is that I didn't have any money. That's that X that you see there. All right, so let me go ahead and uh, highlight that in uh, a, let me go ahead and highlight that in a greenish color. One second, all right. And um, before this, I want to explain that I had forgotten my wallet at home, and that's the reason why I didn't have any money, right? So as you can see, both events are um, are related. Okay, there we go. So that was the explanation about how the past perfect works, guys. So then uh, we are going to check a little bit about how we can make uh, positive statements and also negative statements so we can uh, produce them, okay? So we can uh, then uh, create some examples because that's really important, okay? So uh, let me just... I think we can go ahead and watch the video and I will explain it to you. So uh, let's listen to the video and then I will explain you uh, in a little bit, okay? Here we go, guys. Okay, let me go back. Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to form past perfect statements. We'll learn the structure and practice. So let's get started. In our previous lesson, we learned about the past perfect. And it's always important to keep that in mind. So we use the past perfect to express an event that occurred before another event in the past. Uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to learn about the structure. So let's get started. I would like to start by making positive statements. So the first thing that I would like to point out is uh, just the structure, and then we'll see how that structure works. Let me just make this a little bit bigger so that you can see clearly. So in order to form the past perfect, we're going to have a subject. And then that is going to be followed by an auxiliary. That happens to be hat, as you can see there, color in red. And then after that, we, uh, we're going to follow the past participle of the verb. So we're going to include the past participle of the verb. And then finally, we will have a complement to that sentence. In the example, we see that we're using the past 
event and the past perfect event. And that's because we're combining two tenses together and we're using those accordingly. So as you can see, we, we see the past event here and then we have the past perfect event as a continuation of that. But I mentioned that um, we, these sentences can be separate or they can be together. So let's look at the examples at this time. Um, I mentioned that we're going to have some sort of subject, so we're going to say someone, all right? And I'm going to borrow that second example that you see there at the bottom. Uh, this follows the auxiliary verb. This, in this case, is going to be hat, and then this is going to be this is going to follow the past participle of whatever verb that I'm using. So in this case, uh, the verb it's steal, all right? And the past participle of that verb it's stolen, okay? So someone had stolen my wallet. Just to emphasize uh, what we're doing, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, try to see if I can if I can point this out in the right place so that we can clearly see what is it that I'm talking about. So the subject is someone. Alright, so I should color this maybe blue, or the same thing as it's in red, the auxiliary verb is in red, and then the past participle is uh, the verb that we're going to use in uh, the past participle. So in this case, I'm using the color uh, green. So let's look at the other examples that are on this chart up here. I have put my stuff in my locker. So first of all, we have the subject is I, it follows the auxiliary verb had. And then the past participle of the verb, in this case, is put. Um, and then we will include a complement. I have put my stuff in my locker. My stuff in my locker will be the complement. Um, finally, we have another sentence uh, that we want to emphasize. So let me do that right now. Okay, so we have, I have forgotten to lock the locker. So uh, once again, we have the subject in that sentence is I excluder verb have the past participle of the verb forget it's forgotten and then the complement becomes to lock the locker now quickly what I want to explain is how to make negative statements in the past perfect let me go ahead and um, give a couple of examples here um, there are no negative sentences in this little chart so I'm gonna make those and I'm gonna try to Okay, so I just want to take some time to explain the, the, the first part. So we have the positive statements. It's very easy. We just have to use a subject, okay? Like in this case, it can be a pronoun. It can be a, a noun or anything like that. And then we have the verb had. Like I mentioned before, we're going to use had for all, uh, it, uh, all different pronouns, right? Like in this case, we can use hi, I had, uh, she had, he had and that is not going to change. That part is going to remain the same. Then we have the past participle of the verb. Like in this case, we have put. Put uh, does not change. Uh, it just remains the same. Then we have uh, forgotten, right? That's the past participle. And then we have the complement. So just like that, very easy, right? So I had put my stuff in my locker. I had forgotten to lock the locker. Okay, that would be a complement. And so that's that's it. Very easy. All right now we are going to learn how to make negative sentences. Okay, so here we go. The past participle. How to make negative statements in the past perfect. Let me go ahead and um, give a couple of examples here. Um, there are no negative sentences in this little chart, so I'm gonna make those and I'm gonna try to um, <clears throat> make sense of them. So let me first explain the structure of that. Uh, so the structure to make negative sentences, negative statements or negative sentences. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, the only thing that changes is that instead of had, we're going to include hadn't. Uh, by the way, this is also the same thing as saying had not. So you might see that either by saying had not or hadn't. Now, the most common thing to do is that we will use the contraction. All right, so most of the time, you'll see contractions to that effect. So let me give you then a few examples, and then um, I'm going to have you do a few examples as well. All right. So I'm going to try to see if I can fit those in into the structure that we see here. 
subject is I. In this case, I mentioned we're going to use Hatton. All right, so let me just make sure that we're using the appropriate colors here, just to make sure that we're understanding what we're doing. So, uh, in that case, that's the auxiliary verb, uh, and in this case, because it's a negative, we we're going to say Hatton. Um, then we use the past participle of that verb. Uh, so in this case, um, it's lock. Uh, the past participle that is locked. Um, maybe another quick example that you can probably relate to is the following. So I'm going to go ahead and write that. I hadn't finished my work, so I couldn't leave work at at that time. So what I would like for you to do next is I would like for you to practice these concepts, practice making positive statements following this structure, and practice making negative statements. You can. All right, guys. So then uh, now we have the negative sentences. That's very easy too. So the only thing that changes is that we are going to add, in this case, uh, the word not, the adverb not, after uh, the word had, right? We can also make contractions, like in this case, probably is the most common uh, to make contractions. Like I hadn't locked my door, I hadn't finished my work, so I couldn't leave work at that time, okay? So very easy, very, very easy, guys. We just need to add that little con contraction, or we can add the word not uh, after uh, the word had. That's it. Very easy. Okay, so, ¿tenemos alguna pregunta, guys, eh, hasta ahora? Sé que esta parte quizá es un poquito más aburrida, ¿verdad? Pero eh, también es parte de la gramática que teníamos que revisar. Así que eh, me gustaría que hagamos algo, quizás ahorita. Eh, por favor, eh, vamos a hacer unas cuantas... Eh, oraciones, hagámoslas ahí eh, ustedes por favor con papel o lapicero, lo pueden hacer eh, si quieren también pueden man eh, mandármelas por acá por el chat quiero que me manden aunque sea una dos de cada uno de positivas y negativas, ok utilizando el pasado perfecto y si pueden utilizar también el otro el otro pasado, ya sea pasado simple o pasado continuo, para relacionarlas ambas, pues estaría perfecto, verdad o por ejemplo, ustedes piensen en algo, o sea, uh, piensen, uh, yo llegué a casa y cuando llegué a casa ya habían cocinado la cena, por ejemplo. Uh, no sé, algo así. Y ustedes lo pueden eh, poner utilizando este pasado perfecto, ¿ok? So I got home and when I got home they had uh, made dinner already, for example. So let's try to do that, and then you guys send it uh, to the meeting chat. Okay, we have a meeting chat here. You can go ahead and send it there. Le voy a poner por acá el ejemplo para que lo vean. Okay, let's see. Structure. That we comes to word that we're going to use in uh, the green. So let's look at the other examples that are on. There you go. This is the structure. So please go ahead and do it. Okay, very good. I worked for a week. I have worked weekends this month, okay? Okay. Then I went to the beach when I had uh -huh, when I had arrived, my friends danced all night, okay? Vamos a ver, Evelyn dice, yo fui a la playa y cuando yo llegué, mis amigos bailaron toda la noche, creo que quiere decir Vamos a ver.
Creo que lo diría mejor de otra forma, Evelyn. Uh, I would say something like, uh, when I arrived to the beach, my friends had eaten, uh, I'm sorry, let me see. No, this is not about eating, right? Uh, I got confused because you had just sent another one that says I had eaten my cake. So I, I apologize. So uh, when I arrived at the beach, my friends had uh, danced all night. Okay. For example, vamos a ver. Yo diría eh, algo así. Porque a veces tenemos que pensar lo diferente. No lo tenemos que pensar tanto como en español. Okay. So when I arrived at the beach, my friends had danced all night. Ok, si se fija acá, estamos utilizando casi que la estructura que tenemos acá en el ejemplo, ¿verdad? Dice, cuando yo llegué, en el pasado, eh, a la playa, mis amigos habían, ok, had danced, ok, habían, que es parte de la estructura que tenemos acá, y luego el pasado participio, had danced all night, ok, when I arrived at the beach, my friends had danced all night, por ejemplo, I had eaten my cake, that's good, very good, then I hadn't come to the hospital yet, ok, very good, very good, Evelyn, very good job, that was, that was good, Then we have, I was working, but I had stopped due to a noise in my computer. Mm, okay, yes. Uh, I would say something like maybe I was working, but uh, then. Vamos a ver, ¿cómo lo pudiéramos decir mejor para que suene un poco mejor? But I had to, I had stopped. Ok, yo estaba trabajando, pero había parado debido a un... Ajá, es que creo que no está tan bien así como está. Uh, I had to stop. Yeah, I think that in this case, Karen, maybe we can say something different. Like, I was working, but I had to stop because... No. I mean, es que, es que creo que no está bien, creo que no está entendiendo bien la idea. Pero básicamente tenemos que recordar que estamos hablando de una acción y de otra acción que sucedió antes de esa, ¿ok? Entonces, ¿cómo lo pudiéramos hacer? Tendría que ser diferente, creo yo. Porque acá la idea que estamos queriendo decir, Karen, y está bien, creo que la idea que usted quiere decir es como que yo estaba trabajando pero tuve que detenerme debido a un ruido en mi computadora, ¿ok? Pero eso es diferente. Sería otro tipo de oración. Sería como que I was working, but I had to stop, ¿ok? Pero no en pasado. Sería como que así, vamos a ver. Working, but I had to stop because of, uh, due to a noise. Noise in my computer así, ¿verdad? pero si lo queremos hacer eh, nosotros utilizando la estructura que estamos utilizando ahorita sería como que I was vamos a ver dónde está ya me perdí I was I was working porque en este caso estamos como contrastando dos ideas pero eh, en el otro caso, en el que estamos viendo ahorita, son dos ideas que están conectadas, ¿ok? No están como haciendo un contraste, sino que están conectadas. Entonces sería como que, I was working eh, when, I don't know, let's see. When I was working, I had been uh, hearing a noise, I don't know, something like that. <laughs> I got confused, guys, I'm sorry. Vamos a ver, Karen, eh, Can you hear me? Sí, hey, I'm here. There, there we go. Right, so, bueno, en este caso, Karen, eh, déjeme solamente preguntarle uh -huh. eh, si estoy en lo correcto. Básicamente, usted acá, en la oración que compartió, está como queriendo decir 
que usted estaba trabajando, pero tuvo que parar Para, debido a un ruido en la computadora, ¿verdad? ajá, sí. Ok, porque acá lo que estamos haciendo ahorita es como decir, eh, acá, por ejemplo, este de aquí. Yo estaba haciendo ejercicio y había puesto mi, eh, mis cosas en mi casillero. Entonces, eh, usted pudiera decir, por ejemplo, I was working and I had heard a noise uh, coming from my computer, for example. Básicamente las ideas tienen que ser como relacionadas, no tienen que ser como puestas. Porque en este caso es como que se estaba haciendo algo, pero se interrumpió por otra cosa. Entonces tendría que ser diferente. No sé si me explico bien. Eh, sí, creo que sí, Ok. creo que sí. Ok. Okay, very good. Thank you, Karen. I appreciate that. I was trying just to make sense of it because <laughs> I got confused sometimes. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh -huh. Vamos a ver. okay. Después tenemos acá, eh, tenemos a, quiero ver, a Rodrigo. Dice, I went to play soccer and the field was closed. Ah, ok. Está bien también, eh, Rodrigo. Otra vez casi que es parecido a lo que le estaba diciendo a Karen. Sería como que, I went to play soccer, but they had close the soccer field something like that they had closed it ok, entonces usted fue a jugar pero lo habían cerrado lo cerraron antes de que usted llegara ok, entonces sería I went to play soccer but they had closed the soccer Field, por ejemplo. Oh, perdón, acá creo que... I'm sorry. Did I made a mistake. <laughs> Vamos a ver acá. There we go. Ahí está. Luego tenemos a Dinora. Dice, I was driving to the hospital, but I forgot my date. Ok, vamos a ver. Eh, Dinora, acá usted... Eh... Dinora. Yes. Ok, very good. There we go. Entonces acá solamente déjeme confirmar si lo entiendo correctamente. Usted acá Ah. dice, yo estaba conduciendo al hospital, pero había olvidado mi cita. Ajá, eh, como a uno le dan, no sé, un, una cita así en físico. Uh -huh. Ajá, algo así tenía la idea. Ay, sí. Okay, very good. Thank you so much, Dinora. Most of the times when we want to talk about something like that, we say, I have an appointment. Okay, that's what we call it. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, so then you, uh, again, it's the same thing that I told almost everyone. Maybe I didn't explain myself well. So you, we need to say something like this. Uh, I was driving to the hospital, but I had forgotten my appointment uh, paperwork I don't know something like that Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I changed that one. you changed it okay very good very very good thank you Dinora so básicamente eso sería vamos a ver luego Jacqueline dice I had been painting my house this week okay very good very good that's another uh, structure but that's good Jacqueline básicamente también tenemos el pasado perfecto continuo ¿Qué es lo que nos mandó ahí Jacqueline? Que es cuando utilizamos I had and then been painting. ¿Ok? Es continuo. Es del pasado perfecto, pero continuo. ¿Ok? También es, es bueno. Eh, luego tenemos acá I hadn't complete Ok, I hadn't completed my chores yet. ¿Ok? It has to be in the, in the past participle. That's it. That's, that's the only thing. Bueno, vamos a ver aquí otra vez los ejemplos, guys, y veamos la estructura también, ¿ok? Para que no nos perdamos. So, uh, tenemos acá una, un evento en el pasado. Puede ser utilizando el verbo to be, como en este caso. I was working out. They were able to steal it. Or when I came back. When I came back is the simple past, right? That's the simple past. And then we have the past perfect event. I was working out. And I had put my stuff in my locker. Fíjense acá. Sujeto. 
had past participle and then the complement, right? Igual aquí. Someone es el sujeto, luego had, luego stolen, past participle, and then the complement, okay? Because, uh, well, I'm sorry, <laughs> because I had, okay, I, the, the subject, then we have had, then we have the past participle forgotten, and then we have the complement, okay? Very easy, just like that. And then when it comes to negative sentences, we only need to add, in this case, the contraction or the word not. Just like that. Very easy, right? Okay, bueno, entonces vamos a la última parte, guys. Solamente nos hacen falta las preguntas y aquí vamos a terminar por el día de hoy. This is the last part, guys. I know you guys are tired. You may want to go to bed now, but just the last part, okay? I promise. ¿Qué está pasando acá? Vamos a ver. Hi everyone. By the end of this class you'll learn how to form questions using the past perfect tense. So, let's get started. I would like to start off by presenting the formula, if you will, in order to form past perfect questions. So let me include the formula now to this document and then I'm going to write a couple of questions and then we're going to try to make sense of those two questions there. So let me start off by having a yes or no question. And then we're going to try to make sense of this particular question, of course, following this formula that we see here. So first of all, um, if we have a yes and no question, I will start by using had. That's the auxiliary verb. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and color that real fast just to make sure that we are understanding this particular topic. I think I'm using green color there. Yeah. And then uh, this follows the subject. In this case, this happens to be you. So let me put a little blue color there. Uh, then uh, we will use the past participle of the verb that we're using. So in this case, it's the verb study. Okay, there we go. Um, and then we have a complement. So that uh, in black, you see that that's the complement of this particular question. So the question is, had you studied English before taking this class, right? Um, and um, that's how we form a yes or no question. Now let me write a WH question. Uh, and WH questions, well, uh, what that means is that we're going to include a WH word. And we do that whenever we want more information on a particular topic. Uh, this, the way to do it is almost the same thing with the only difference that we will include a WH word. As you can see there, we have a WH word there. Um, and then had continues to, we use the auxiliary had, uh, we include the subject. Uh, in this case, we include the past participle of the verb and then whatever complement that exists. So the question is, where had you studied English before taking this class? So maybe the answer to the previous question was yes. And then we went and uh, we asked a second question. Where had you studied English before taking this class? So what I would like for you to do now is to practice making lots of questions in order to make sure that you're understanding this particular topic. Right, so, uh, friends, I will take just a couple of seconds of your time, guys, so I can explain this very, very quickly. So very easy, right? We just have, in this case, we have the word had at the beginning, then the subject, then the past participle, and then the complement. And if we want to make a WH question, like in this case, uh, we just add the word, the WH word at the beginning, right? Like where had you studied English before taking this class? That's it, very easy. I don't think that there is too much to explain. It's, it's very easy, we just have to practice. You guys can uh, create some sentences using this structure, okay? So had, subject, past participle, plus complement. So, uh, for example, had they stolen uh, my wallet or hide, uh, I'm sorry, had they stolen your wallet, for example, or had you uh, put your stuff in the locker? For example, had you forgotten to lock the locker? Habías olvidado eh, eh, poner, ¿cómo, cómo se dice? Eh, asegurar o bloquear, he olvidado la palabra, eh, olvidaste cerrar el casillero, por ejemplo, 
Entonces, eh, de esa forma, ¿verdad? Solamente vamos a ir cambiando el sujeto y el verbo, y luego el complemento. Por lo demás, pues la estructura siempre va a ser la misma. ¿Ok? So, any questions, guys, about this part? Uh, luego, pues, la última, la, la única parte que nos hacía falta, perdón, eh, sería esto de acá, lo cual eh, es un, una parte de un knowledge check eh, con respecto al pasado perfecto, pasado continuo o el pasado simple. Entonces, ustedes acá tienen que colocar el verbo basados en lo que ustedes creen que es la respuesta correcta. Acá está entre, entre paréntesis, ¿ok? Break into, live, shop, give, run out. Recordemos que tenemos que terminar esta sección, eh, yo creo que para ahora, o al menos para mañana. Así que por favor, les, les encargo a todos que trabajemos en esto. Si tienen alguna pregunta o algo no les está saliendo bien, por favor, eh, díganlo en el grupo y ahí vamos a ver cómo lo resolvemos entre todos, ¿ok? Ok, thank you. Ok, Welcome. Thanks. Very good. You're welcome, guys. And well, thank you for coming, guys. I appreciate that. Uh, really happy to see you again. And remember, we don't have classes tomorrow. So I will see you on Monday. So good night, guys. Okay, bye. 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 Enjoy your weekend, guys. Bye.